All right, folks, welcome on back here for another fantastic edition of our Trader Stock Workshop here this Tuesday. Get my date right here, April 16th, day after tax day. How could I forget? Great to see all of our students and members alike. Let's get the webcam up and running inside our live trading room. Leonard, Phil, got Sam, got Larry, got Danny, Chris. Had the ladies just a moment ago scrolling above right now. Had Ravino just before. Margaret, Bell, Barbara on top. There. You got Bill, you got Alex, you got Ray. You got a packed house here, including not just our students, but a lot of our new trial members joining us just over the last week, two weeks worth of events, including Well365. So if you're new to our trading room, first day, first week, Welcome aboard. Pretty good day to start, if anything, because here in Traders Talk, this gives us as good of a chance as any to break down the X's and O's. You know, just before we had called out a few different trades right here. Uh, WISA, we could even start off with. This is the one that I was more on top of. Fausto himself had called out this Goev trade really like before 1030, but it made an even better push afterwards. That's what he was just commenting on inside our live trading room. Well, here in Traders Talk, this gives us as good of a chance as any to really break down, not just like, oh, it moved up, like, oh, this person made that money. Like, yeah, I'll tell you what I did, and I'll show you losses that I took today, too. It wasn't all perfect for me, but it's a matter of saying, what what were the real X's and O's behind taking a trade? And for us here, much like, you know, Phil, Ravina, Grant, Irving, Brad, I, you know, just a lot of our members here are longtime, not just members, but students that are actually part of our classes, phases one, two, and three of our stock trading course. Now, you folks know, at least, you know, we talk about like the three T's, tradable, trend, trap. So the trap part, we can probably save. I'll talk more about in class even next week. But tradable and trend. Does the stock have good liquidity? Does it have a tight spread? Does it have thin, uh, filled in orders out there across each price level or, or most at least? A uh, stock like Goev here, you can see, certainly has that type of volume. And earlier, well, it started to make a nice breakout off the highs. That's when Fausto, I believe, had first called it out. So easy to say that moved up from there, right? Easy to say all moved up. But where were the key levels? Where were the icebergs, right? And that's where we're going to have the best chance to go over this year in Traders Talk. So you know what? This is on the screen now. Let's actually just start off with this trade here at least. Why not, right? So let me just actually get my timestamp right. I want to make sure if I can get this correct from Fausto here. I know you typed it in the chat board just earlier. You know what? At 1020, we were first calling it out. Rich was making a comment on it, but like 1020, 1025, that's when Fausto was actually on top of it, really, from there. So, you know, late from the first breakout here off of like the highs, right? All right. Well, where were the icebergs after that point? You know, how could you have entered a trade like this, if anything? So, how about this? Let me just ask our students here, all of us inside our live trading room right now. Where do you see um, an iceberg order out here on this trade? Looking at this heat map live on my screen, uh, I have some folks that I like, try and look on their own platform stances. But look on my screen, folks. Just look at the orange line stretching across the page. You know what seems to be the largest order, like from this view, from this look. What price level sticks out to you there? You know the most on the heat map, on the COB column. Sam, Danny, Brad, first actually the punch, Irving. At 265, look at 265 right there. You can see about 59 plus thousand shares. So all of us are answering other like prices here. You know, just look at look at the COB column, right? This definitely speaks pun intended. I'm sorry, I just trap myself in these things. This speaks volumes, right? Pun intended there. But you know, 59,000 shares at least on the offer at 265. That could be an easy to see resistance here at this point, but but. This order over time does get pulled. This is something I wanted to note after the fact, obviously. You can see here now, this goes from like orange red to like whitish blue. Means that most of that order got pulled. Went from 59.3, 59,300 shares to 9,000, 9,600 shares. Stock didn't break over that price at the time. So that order naturally got pulled. Is it possible it could have been placed higher? Yeah, I mean, well, the answer to that is definitely, it's definitely possible. But here, I don't really see it. I'm not really showing too much visibility out there otherwise. Now, how about this question now? Let's answer this next question for all of us here in our trading room. And I talk more about this in class. Phase one, actually, just last month in March, as I recall my months of the year, I can't believe 2024 is already flying as fast as it. And we're already like midway through April. It's nuts. But, you know, just back in March, we were talking about this last month in our stock trading course. With, with book map, with the heat map here. And actually not even the heat map part of this program, of this window, but look on the uh, column CVP. Look on the column CVP right there, the, the volume spikes to the right side. 
are there uh, any price levels that stick out to you? That could be like a big volume area from that one column, CVP. Alex Phil, all saying 260. There we go. Yeah, 260 right here. You could tell. Now, what this essentially means is that after this ended up popping and moving up, it was running off of, relatively speaking, lighter volume compared to the type of volume that was coming in off the highs. It was top heavy. The stock is top heavy here. Most of the volume on this run is traded right off the top at 260, right? Now, hey, you know what? This sticks out at least. This is a pretty easy to see level for me looking at this one column now. So my thought is on this trade, if it could end up breaking over 260, if it can keep testing 260 across the morning, I'm bound to believe it's going to make a more decisive move than, what is this, like a couple pennies up and a couple pennies down, right? You know, if that's such a big level, then we should be seeing a pretty good reaction shortly after. So the only issue on this trade, and it's like, like I, I feel like I'm Seinfeld when I'm like thinking about issues here. It's like, you know, thinking about the smallest little issue to break up with your girl. But no, it's to say like the only issue on this trade, because I, this stock I love, we did really well in this trade, like just a couple weeks back, right? A few weeks back, back in mid March, even almost a month ago, pretty much. But uh, you know, this trade here, we're heading into reversal time. We're heading into 10, 15, 10, 30. So the question you might ask is like, how much more can this keep going? It's not up too much percentage wise. It truly isn't. You know, it's only up 16% right now live and it's at 288. This is at 260 here earlier in, earlier in the morning. So this had to have been when this was at like, what, like 9%, 10%, maybe even 8%. I don't know. So it's not up a lot percentage wise. The only thing is just like we're heading into reversal out. So you, know, you better hope that it once it breaks 260 it can make a sharper reaction you know certainly get like 20 25 cents on the trade on the way up um now at this point let's see are there any new orders out there afterwards i mean they're not as big but you could see a 285 288 your next group of you know 14 15k orders out there and those have been out there since the market had opened up so that's a good you know site there so Hey, if you can jump in over 260 after Fausto, or, or right, you know, at this point here, I think this was even, I'll split the truth. I think, I think this might be prior to Fausto's call out 1025. This is pretty much when Rich made his comment, his chat in the room. All right. Well, after that, 285. And what was the other one? We had 285 and 290, was it? 288. So the combination of those two prices now should act as resistance. And if the stock ends up breaking above that as resistance, then the hope is to see resistance get flipped into support. So easy to say, it just breaks right above it. It flips this into support just immediately. But over time, this might look to make another run later on today, because at least here now, we're seeing this show signs of life off of 285, 288 here. It did try and go under and over. And now there's a second chance for if this wants to make another run again, it's like probably got to do it pretty soon here. Otherwise, I'll probably see this begin to pull back and go down towards the 260 level. But, you know, there was a chance to get in at least once it broke over 285, 288 here. I wouldn't have expected this to make such a clean breakout. You can see just pretty effortlessly, it just blew right over those two orders. If anything, they were still out there at the time. You see the volume increase actually here on these two candles. So the only hope that you would want to see happen, which it does play at, play out, it's easy to say, but you would want to see resistance become support, right? So shortly after, it does, it kind of dips into the first line, holds above the second, and then just runs much higher afterwards, right? Now at that point, it's a shorter lived run time-wise because you're, you're already at 1030 shortly afterwards. So, you know, of course it can keep going up across the day today. Again, it's only up 15 or so, 16 or so percent. You could see resistance get flipped here into support over time. It's possible, but um, you know, eventually all these stocks are going to begin to pull back, and they typically do around 10, 15, 10, 30. So normally for students like Brad, Sam, Ravina, Charles, or, or one of our trial members here, actually, but we got a few Charleses that are students of ours. But you know, nevertheless, like when a stock is running after 10, 30, you know that you're running on thin time because. How often do these stocks just keep going up and up and up and up without a pullback? Maybe it might keep going up again later on, but this is like a perfect trend up, if anything, up towards three, let alone 325, 330, where it topped off at. So, you know, let me know if you have any questions on Goev. That was a more straightforward call out just because Fausto was calling it out off the highs, you know, trying to see if it can go over that 285, 288 area. But myself here, 
oh boy, this thing is flying still for me. So Wisa, Wistia, Wisa, whatever we want to call it now, it is just this stock. This is where you also have to be careful because you know eventually, much like the, the, the last one, the GoEv trade, eventually big trees fall hard and eventually this will at least hit a top and you know pull back right now. So really briefly, I want to go into this trade in full from pre-market into you know the open here where we ended up calling it out and trading it from there. But speaking of it live here for the time being, looks like there might be a little ladder effect kick, kicking in on the bid. Looks like they pulled their order one more time. So I want to see if this can make a pop again and get halted. Let's get a pop and a halt, a pop and a halt, and give me time to explain the mover. That would be pretty cool. So let me ask, is anyone or was anyone in on this uh, Wistia trade earlier here? W-I-S-A at least. Any of our students, um, Keith, Mark, Brad? Alex, you got Chris, uh, Wendy. Cool, very nice. Lee. And if you didn't, there are other trades. There are other trades. I'm asking to ask. You know, there's there's no right or wrong as far as like, you know, shame on you for not trading it. You know, there's plenty of other stocks out there that we were calling out too. Uh, again, GoEv, right? Um, I did not trade GoEv, right? I was on this. So there's only so much we could focus on as human beings. So I was just asking, but yeah, it goes to show a few of us were on top of this top of this trade early. I might pull the plug here pretty soon just to take whatever remaining profit out because this has been a good one from 290, 292. I think I'm in from. I want to see if this can show one more order on the bid, get, get an order on the bid, a ladder, and then for the breakout over four. But I might be asking for too much here. The reason I might be asking for too much is because this stock's a short squeeze. So it's a huge gamble. You don't know when it's going to pull back and top off in terms of like time. And what I mean by that, if I could try and explain this move briefly, if I may, uh, this stock was not necessarily a $700 stock back last year. The stock was not a $1.4 million stock back in 2019, folks, 2018, right? Um, if they were, I think that we all would have known the name of the company, like Berkshire Hathaway, right? So that's where at least, you know, this stock has been split over and over, probably a few times at least. Um, the most recent one I think Rich posted in our chat board was a one for 150 reverse stock split. So there's probably been a few occasions over the years, whatever crap company this, day, th this is, it just died off over time. I'm surprised they haven't gone bankrupt entirely or completely delisted. Um, nevertheless, when I see this, which I don't see too often, I don't really see a stock that was like, valued at 1.4 million at least back like what however many years ago i know that's not the real valuation back then but in terms of like how much the stock has fallen off percentage it really goes to show that for the shorts that are in this trade right now they're going to need to cover eventually right so whatever good news came out on the stock early this morning you know i'm sure traders look to buy it just day traders naturally but you got to think that for a stock that got beat up that much you know People got to cover their shorts, right? I'm trying to get the news out on this trade here really briefly for the WISA. I'll probably just jump to Benzinga Pro. Um, yeah, a quick sec here. I got to remain focused on my position here, but WISA. Look map on my other monitor there. I actually had a, a question come in from one of our trial members here today, Chris, asking about monitors and overall number of trades that we take throughout the, the day. So we'll get to that actually in just a bit. But on my other monitor here, I book map. I'll, I'll keep watching this trade. It's popping up to four right now. But what's the news out on Wisa here? Got a trading halt from yesterday. Trading higher after the company announced a five year Wisa e licensing agreement with an HDTV PTV brand. Very generic headline. And I don't even know what this is W I S A, like. All right, so I guess there's some sort of news that came out, and you figure it sounds like kind of like good news, so led to a pop in pre-market. That does not guarantee this run. That guarantees nothing, right? In fact, actually, how about this? Prior to the market opening up for all, all of our students here in our chat board, you see my one-minute chart there, basically from 7.30, 8 o'clock, going into the market open, 9.30. What's the trend? What's the trend of this trade leading into the market open? we got wendy says down danny says flat chris larry say down you know flat wouldn't be totally wrong because it is like 
flattening out going into the open, but it's more lower highs and the stock's dropping off there a bit, right? You could say it popped up at first there, but then it's pulling back and it's trending down. Let's see, let's try and break out over four bucks here coming up. One sec. We'll get back to my analysis here in just a little bit. Give me a split moment because I may just look to pull the plug and just get out of this trade just for the hell of it because it's a pretty freaking sweet trade either way. Just you can't go broke taking a profit, right? You're at a whole number level here too. You got two different iceberg orders right now. I just sold. I got out. Got out at 402. That's fun. If it keeps popping up without me, that's a okay because this was a lot of meat off the bone either way for me. So I'm pretty happy, but I'm not trying to teach and trade at the same time. That's what we have class for, right? We have the phase uh, three stock course, at least for that, our advanced trading class headed by Fausto. You might see me in there every now and then. So, you know, that's where we'll try and really hold on to trade better or even try and you know squeeze out as much as we can. But this is a pretty good trade to begin with already from 292. So, get back to this trade now since I'm at it. Give my full attention here towards this morning run. This stock was trending down going into the open, right? It was up off whatever news. It was up percentage wise, but stock's trending down. I mean, market even opened up here at 930, dropped. You could just see that drop off right there at 930. So we're typically following the trend of the stock leading into the market open. So this trade, I didn't have any levels set for at first. There was no real interest that I had on this trade initially, but it ended up making its initial pop here at the time. So my first couple of moves, I'll just mention out, out loud here because I want to focus on this. MRNS was a win. That was a plus. I was in that trade from 150. I missed out on 130. It popped right out the gate. You know, that was a small win. I took a small loss on the stock PRSO. I was in from $2. I was out at 192 on that. Uh, overall, I think I was like net positive, but not much. And then I came to Wisa. So Wisa, this was like shortly after like 940-ish, I think here. Let me even double check my other... What do we got here? Um, yeah, 940, 941 was my entry on this trade. I jumped in right off of 281. Sorry, 940 was my entry. 941 was half my exit. So right here, popped up right up to 281. And on this trade, I wanted to take this because it was breaking over the VWAP price. It was also breaking above, you know, at least a chart level here, it seemed like you could say right off of like 275-ish. 275-ish, maybe you could say that 280. So I jumped in at 282 or 281. I didn't think I was like chasing it in terms of price. I did think I was chasing it in terms of the pop. So I definitely needed to see support get flipped into. Thankfully for this, it just kept popping up nice. So I was ready to see this pull back and see 275 get flipped into support. Uh, easy to say that just didn't happen. It kept popping up, but I ended up taking half my trade out there uh, at 297 right here. And then the second half was, what was it at? Like three something, like 329 or something just popped up. Now with that though, hey, where do we go from here? What's the next trade on the stock afterwards? And why did I get in and out where I did, right? Well, I explained the entry off of 280. 280 was the VWAP breakout over a little chart level at 275. Let me ask us here, new question. At what price and what size, if it's easier to read, if it's not as easy to read, I get it. But what price, at least, do we have our big iceberg order out there when you look at this heat map? When you see this heat map for Sam and Larry, Kevin, Susie, and, and, and Lee and Danny and all of us here, let me know. What do you got? You got 315, all of us saying, right? 315. It's kind of hard to see the, the number there. You got the bright green spike. It's all right. It's 118,000 shares. 118,000 shares. It was even more than that earlier. It was getting nipped at, poked at, poked at. And I thought that there was a case for this to try and hold again. So I did take a small loss here as I jumped in from 216 or 316. And I thought, wow, there's no way this is going to do it again, right? Well, I was up earlier on the morning. So I ended up risking it here. It's not my you know, most confident entry because it already tested it once or like a couple instances here at this point. So the more times it tests it, this does happen. So I did take a small loss because I ran the risk of, all right, maybe it could try one more time, maybe. So I set a tight stop right under, I think it was even 310, just a risk like five or six cents on this and it pulled back, it is what it is. It just pulled back, took me out. But at this point though, in my head, in my head, this is where normally I'd say, okay, let's just move on to a different stock. Well, Goev was moving at the time. That was a pretty good trade perhaps at first, 
uh, PRSO. This one died off pretty quickly. I told you I took a little money on that. Uh, I know Fausto was calling out Tesla earlier here. You know, I didn't have my options order book open on me for that one, but really Wistia was the uh, still pushing up. You know, Wistia is really a nice trade because of this type of short squeeze potential. You know, you can go back on all these crap stocks like Pally and uh, yesterday. What did we have yesterday? Hey, AVL. Okay, stock went from 800 bucks down to however much this is, like four or five bucks over time. Eventually, shorts got to cover, right? Um, but if I get excited about that type of drop off and thinking about you know short covering, then what do you think I'm going to feel when I see like, even though it's not a real valuation, mind you, it wasn't $1.4 million back in 2018, but based off of all of these reverse splits, it's getting me to think like, man, I got to stick on this trade. I, I, I got to just remain focused. Um, maybe it won't pop. Maybe it'll just continue to die off. And if so, I'm probably going to take a few break evens and a couple small losses in between mixed in. You know, that's the downside with trying to be an opportunistic trader and looking for, you know, at least the, seeing the light in a lot of uh, trades, you know, oh, like this stock could break out here. The stock can make this 100% move there. Here it did. A pretty good run. Uh, got a lot of meat off the bone, and I really don't care too much with that with this pushing up without me here because, again, just if you're able to get in off a, a decent level and it's popping up, making a higher high, the new game that we play is, or the next game that we play at least here is, it's always the same game, actually, not a new game, but um, can resistance flip into support? Can we see resistance flip into the next support level? So what I mean by that is if we go back to that 315 level at least, over here, this broke down as support. When a stock breaks below support, support should initially become. Okay, no surprise there. And again, and then it broke above it. And then ever since it held above it, or it may have had like one or two small shakes, but it didn't stop me out here when it was shaking like this. That had my stop a little lower, but it ended up making that break higher. Like I was looking for that higher high. So that's the name of the game that you play. Can resistance flip into support? Even try to pull back again as I started traders talk. So I, I guess you could say I lucked out because maybe if this didn't continue here, it would have shook back down, stopped me out. You know, would have made less on the trade. Wouldn't have been able to take part in this run. But you know, it just goes to show that as long as you know, A, where is there a big level? It's not just on the chart. It's on level three. It's on level four. Don't mind my mangled fingers here too as I do this stream. Got a got a couple injured fingers here as we go through. But otherwise, you know, it's a matter of saying, is there a big level out on this trade? And 315 was not the only big level. You know, I was focused around the VWAT for my second entry, which was off of 290. Uh, it was off of I took a small loss here. No, that was a break even, even at that point. It was in a couple times 291 entry, 292 exit. That was wasted profit. Um, and again at 292, I endured a shake and then it popped up afterwards, and that was the trade from that point. So this has been a butte. This has been a really nice trade heading into the late morning. Um, again, you know, I'm not gonna try and jump back in over the next 30 minutes. We got emails to answer, we got trades to review more on top. Um, but if you want to at least kind of focus in on this trade for a moment and say, all right, well, where could we plot levels for next at least, you know, as we continue on other stocks and other emails and questions. Well, how about this? Let me ask all of us here, Margaret, Charles, Lee, all of our students here in chat, where are we more likely to find the iceberg levels without even looking at this? Answer's not on this page necessarily, but where are we more likely to find icebergs for a cheap stock, you know, a $3, $5, $10 stock? What common set of price levels are we more often to find, you know, iceberg levels at? Bingo. All of us in unison. It's like a choir right here. 50 cent levels and whole numbers, right? Okay, well, you got 450 coming up, I'm sure. That could be a point of interest, could be. There is, uh, you know, about 10, actually, that just grew to be 10,000 shares right now. You got about 13,000 shares at 460, which was the high of the day level just before here, high of the day price. Um, so you could say 450 to 460, the combined prices there to act as resistance. Let me ask, though, is there... Is there a price that sticks out on maybe some of the other parts of this heat map or program here? Like, is there like another level that sticks out across this whole page, you know, from left to right, up to down, perhaps? A lot of volume being traded off of the uh, last 30 or so minutes here after it made this pop and run. A lot of volume being traded. What do we got? 
Ravina saying four. Well, you know, it's a whole number, right? You could say that just two. But Phil saying 430. Henry saying 430 as well. Yeah, look at that CVP column, right? So not just the CVP, but my delta shows certainly a stark difference between the buying and selling here. So what I mean by that is there's just a lot more volume filled at the ask at 430. There's a lot of volume filled at the ask. So what that means is perhaps traders that were long are dumping their shares off on the offer. And this is having a tough time making the break above it, make, trying to pop above that level and continue. Like even before here, it tried to move back up. It popped above 430 again right here. This was at 1128 about three minutes, you know, three minutes ago here. It broke above this price at this point. Well, it can try and run. There's a case for a higher high, right? Well, this is the thing. If we're not going to see this stock explode off of what I would call this to be a lot of buying, then it's to say, well, perhaps the foot's being taken off the, the gas pedal here on this run. And if the foot's taken off the gas pedal, this stock's not just going to stall out forever or stall out and just kind of stop forever. It's not a car, right? Uh, it's going to go in reverse for you. It's going to pull back for you. It's going to put its foot back on the gas pedal and you're going to be flying the other way. So why is that the case? Well, we did talk about that just last month in the um, in the phase two stock course. You know, we talked more about how buying can become selling, how selling can become buying over time. Treat the, the green and red at face value, though. Green, you think of initially as buying, initially. But the more it fails to make that expected move up, then that's where your mindset flips around. And here we go. There's the pullback. So... You know, I feel like this could be the end of the run here, even at 430. You know, it's going to have a really tough time continuing if it can't flip 430 into support, right? Lost my hotkeys. I forgot. I got to reset. I reset my path and I lost my hotkeys on this and draw my lines in the old fashioned way. All right. So, you know, hey, that, that that's the Wisa run that right there for the most part. Let me know if you have any questions on, on that. Um, I have a question that came in from chat just earlier from one of our new, new trial members uh, just a moment ago. And I want to read it here first. Then I'll go through emails. Um, this came in from uh, Chris. And he was asking just pretty quickly, like, how many monitors do I need if I want to continue with you guys? And how many trades do you typically take per day? So I'll answer the first. Uh, how many monitors? Let me ask everyone this question first. For all of our uh, students, answer this as well. But I even want to hear more so from our new trial members joining us here. Charles, and um, I know Chris is here, and, and there's maybe a couple others just joining us live today. Um, how many monitors do you have right now? Right now, like how many are you trading off of right now? Uh, you got Ray here. That's a new trial member. You got Jean-Marc. You got Andrew, Octavia. You got a few of us here today. Connie. And of course, our, our students as well, right? Our students, of course, like Sam, Alex, you know, Wayne. Wayne, I feel like you're uh, making a rare Traders Talk appearance, my friend. Normally in the pre-market, it's, it's great to have you here. It's great to have Wayne with us here today. And, uh, you know, all of us kind of answering different numbers, right? Manny saying four, Charles saying four, Danny saying four, Charles, our trial member says he has three computers with five monitors. He is well equipped, right? Uh, Leonard says three 32 inch monitors plus a laptop. He's also well equipped. That's pretty nice. Uh, hey folks, when I say that there's honestly, I'm not thinking like the more monitors, the better when I say that just, you know, Hey, large monitors, that is easy on the eyes, right? So 32 inches, that's a big monitor size. That's good um sam says a computer plus two monitors uh alex says two monitors wayne says three john three danny three chris two uh henry has a big one it's one but it's a big one uh chris m4 larry three ravina three lee three brad two ray two wendy two uh john four philip uh two brad that's a little why okay so, <laughs> yes we are good to go so with that said at least um i have two I think these are 27 inches or 28 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, monitors, HP, one, two next to each other. Then I'm speaking out of my laptop here, actually. So uh, technically, I have three monitors in full. This I just use for the trading room. I just use this for like actually the trading room. I use this for the one-on-one -on -one coaching program I conduct, um, emails, miscellaneous stuff. Um, and then this here, my two monitors, I have Bookmap Level 4. I have Benzinga Pro. I have my main trading platform here. But this is where I'll tell you, at least, first off, 
if you're wondering how many monitors that you should be having, just notice what the average student said or notice what the average answer was, right? It was a varying, but it was probably around three, right? And I have three myself right now. I have a side monitor I could attach to my laptop if I really want to make that a fourth. For anyone out there that already has a lot and you're and you feel comfortable trading off of that, that's one thing. That that that's separate. You know, I'm not speaking to you folks here at this. But if you're someone that thinks otherwise, that like, oh, the more monitors, the better. Like, I need to have eight. I need to have 10. Like, and you only have one right now or two. Don't do that. You got to train your eyes to interpret uh, two screens first going from one. You need to train your eyes to interpret four screens or three screens from two. So don't think like, oh, I got to get out, like get out like 10 monitors, 10 screens, eight screens. If you're If you're already on that and you're doing well, Kudos, right? I'm not. I'm not saying I wouldn't want you to change your habits. Then, if you're comfortable in making money, but if you're someone that's not making money and thinks like, "Oh, I got to get like five, six months," no, stop. I went from six to five to four. Now I'm on three over my years with Fausto. Been with Fausto for. I've been saying this for like a few months now, but it's true. October, ten years. So going on ten years now, Fausto. I went from six to five to four. Now I'm on three. Keep it super simple, right? The Kiss method. So. Now, how many trades do I take a day? That's a different story. That is a different question because I am here throughout the majority of my day. You know, I'll take like maybe an hour break here and there. Some days I'll dip out and, you know, Josh runs the beach here now in Florida every now and then uh, on a nice afternoon if I can get out at like 2.30, 3 o'clock, right? But otherwise, if I'm here throughout my day, like I'm taking like roughly like anywhere. Well, let's just use a ballpark range because I don't want to give a fixed number because that's not proper. I'd probably say 15 to 25. I was going to say 10 to 20, but let's up it another five. Like 15 to 25 trades a day. A lot of break evens in between. And I mean that because we talked about this last week in Traders Talk, our Masters Week edition of Traders Talk. Made a little money on Scotty Scheffler. But otherwise, though, uh, going par on a hole is good. It ain't bad. That's that's for certain, right? You know, you're only competing against yourself. So if you've already made your money, if you killed it on Wisa, if you made 10 cents on MRNS, you took a small loss on PRSO, you're, you're net positive, and then you go break even for the rest of the day. It's not like what I'm trying to do. It's not what I'm striving for as a trader, but that's not bad. Like, don't be like, ah, oh, it's horrible. No. So that's where at least throughout my day, yeah, I will be taking those break evens. But otherwise, like, of course, the name of the game is to try and make money. And there are certain times where if I'm taking more losses than break evens, if I'm like trying to overexert myself on certain trades, and I realize that after the fact, not beforehand obviously you're taking losses it's like all right let's scale back all together but that's me you're, you're asking what josh's answer should be for that what, what josh's answer is for him that's my answer um what the average student should do that that's completely separate because we want you to really just trade around like you know 9 30 to 10 30 in the morning maybe 11 o'clock 11 30 some days um right now hey that's why i got out of wisa that's why i'm not trying to focus on trades right now that's why we're in Traders talk our workshop here every Tuesday morning, right? So, you know, as we head into the late morning, early afternoon, I'll be on one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with students. And that's a that's a 50-50. Part of those sessions, I review trades. Part of those sessions, traders want to focus on a, on a trade. And even if they're not taking it themselves, they want to see how I do it. So I will take certain trades throughout the day, especially if they're looking good enough. But if they're not going to make the move I desire, I'm not going to try and like let the whole profit go wasted. But I don't need to be perfect, right? If I'm already profitable in the morning, I don't need to be perfect. So I'll take money here and there. I'll go break even here and there. Um, if you are stepping away until three o'clock in the afternoon and you're only here with us in our room for two hours across the whole eight hour day that I'm here, you're probably not taking 15 to 25 trades. Think about it. Probably taking like four, three with that. I have traders that, that that don't trade at all throughout the week because they just have certain things going on, like whether it's work, whether it's family, health, whether it's like mental too, as far as like being afraid to pull the trigger. It happens, right? Um, I have traders that on the flip side, um, and, and I really have to try and work with them on this. It's not easy. I'm no therapist and I work through my own issues as a human being, much like all of us do. But on the flip side, and it's a little worse, but I have traders that are like taking 100 trades a day. It's like, Scale back. You got to take a yank the leash a little bit, right? We, we can't do that um, because it's like, you know, essentially 
trading is gambling, right? It is. That's why there's a 90% failure rate. Um, doesn't matter what strategy is being promoted, pumped out, whatever. There is risk behind it, right? Now, the way that I like to phrase it, it is calculated risk. I, I try not to like make it so negative sounding. It's gambling, gambling. It, that's the truth behind it. It is. But we don't want to turn it into that. It's not like going to the blackjack table and keep tossing, you know, $25 a, a hand down, right? There's like a 42% chance of winning in blackjack. What's your win loss ratio? You know, is it higher than that? Even still, you shouldn't be taking 100 trades a day, right? If it's 80%. That's a different story, right? If it's 80% and you are that active, I hey, keep going, I guess, right? That's not me. And that's not pretty much any of our students that are profitable, at least here at CTU. But, you know, just the more that you trade, honestly, emotions will get to you. So we don't want to, you know, do too much at all, really. Uh, really quick, I got to go through some emails, but I had a question that just came in right now from Manish, one of our new trial members here joining us, saying for new, new members here right now, like himself, What's a good strategy to start with in terms of trades, learning as well as some tips from members who have been here a while? That's a great question. And certainly already an answer that came in from a few of us, like Bill and Ravina answering you right now, Manish. Those are uh, platinum students of CTU, both and you know, longtime members of, of CTU, but also students that have lifetime access to our classes. So Bill said educated speculation. Um, yeah, it kind of in, in lieu of what I was saying, like um, calculated risk, educated speculation. But Ravina answering at least for you saying, you know, I would suggest to start learning this uh, strategy. Don't mix strategies that you might have learned in other rooms. Um, I can't agree more with that. Right. And I don't want to dismiss anyone's strategy, but it's just to say, you know, if you're on a certain diet plan, if you have like, um, if you're trying to lose weight, right. And let's say we're trying to do it the good way, not the Ozepic way, you're trying to work out, eat right, right, sleep well, drink water. You have a nutritionist and you have an exercise coach. Well, they're telling you to do certain things, right? Well, the best results are seen from following that exact model, copy and paste. Now, you might look online and see from this guru, this person, that person, all things that are really good, all things that are very good for you. And you could do these workouts and, and you'd probably get to a good physique, good shape. But maybe it's not to the extent of what the program you're going through is right now, right? Um, so that, that's kind of where I come from with that. And I love how Ravina phrased that. Bill right away, just simple, right? Keeping a simple bill with that answer. Go through the classes. Lee says, listen to all the previously recorded classes. I love that. Um, you know, as well as our main curriculum here, we record this workshop traders talk each and every Tuesday. We offer a lot of handholding for new gold students of CTU. So when you onboard as an actual student, you have a few calls with my associate, my associate, Rich, um, it'll help out with, like the platform, the IT stuff. And then you have like coaching calls, like the real coaching with myself. And that's where we're here together in the market, just privately. Um, so it's not even just the classes, it's the coaching involved, but that's where Manisha, I could just say like. For a trade like Lisa, right? Leaving money on the table is going to happen. What we focus more on than anything else is, all right, at least during the better time of the day, right? At least from 9.35 to 10.30. How could we find the best opportunity to enter a trade? Right now, this is not the best opportunity to enter this trade. It's already up 141%. We called it out way earlier. So, you know, we know that big trees will fall hard. Look at what's becoming a resistance right now. Hint, hint. Um, but with that in mind, at least, you know, for earlier in the day, for a trade out there, what I care a lot about is exactly what you see even here. This would just be a good one to show once again. Seeing simple patterns of resistance getting flipped into support. So from that point, that's where you become more bullish on the thought of continuation. Um, there's a lot going on on this screen. There's a lot being mentioned verbally, like in the audio in the morning and afternoon. Uh, the way I phrase it, there's like a lot of bright colors, fast moving numbers on this screen, right? Makes sense. And it's easy to get overwhelmed. So that's where, you know, we do want you to focus on level three and level four. That's where that's where I have this 430 level live right now, speaking of. But otherwise, it's a matter of just basic charting principles of seeing this resistance, hopefully getting broken through, but more importantly, so getting flipped into a support over time here. Let's see what happens coming up. It keeps nipping at it, nipping at it. The more times it tests it in a smaller concentration, it is more bound to make a better push. Um, it's trying, but still, there's not really too much volume out there as far as like a larger iceberg. But once this gets broken over, you want to see it get flipped 
into support. Get a sharp pop, a pullback, and if it can hold that as support after, that's kind of the move you're looking for. And that's the move you're essentially looking for during a better time of the day, like 9.35, you know, 9.45, 10 o'clock. So for any of my students here, easy for me to say, and it's easy for you to listen to here on this call. But, you know, that's what you have to focus on as well. If you ever get like overwhelmed on a trade, like, oh, shit, this thing's like flying right now without me. What do I do? Well, hey, where is the next resistance level? Is that getting tested any anytime soon? Uh, what was the previous resistance level? Can that get flipped into support? These are things that I'll, that I'll focus on in the moment. Here we go. Look at that sheet right there. So it didn't necessarily pop it so nicely. It like kept nipping it a little bit more. It wasn't like a clean pop and like pullback on the following candle. That's not what you want to see right there. So I think that kind of answers your question right there too. Uh, really quick, Bill. You got Bill Ireland here. You might be wondering. Got a little methylene and blue drink right there. How about that? Uh, Joe asking here, Bookmap is a great tool, but is it the only one that you recommend for seeing orders? No, no, it, it's it's definitely a premier tool because you're able to see the order book visually. Uh, it paints the orders onto a chart for you. Now, let me ask you, Joe, what platform do you have? Well, like trading platform, what broker are you uh, currently on right now? Whatever trial members that trial members asking that question right now. Loading something up right now as you ask and think or swim. Okay, so that right away I'll segue to and say if you're on think or swim, you could actually get book map. You can get that exact heat map directly on the think or swim platform for 40 bucks a month. It's the by far the best deal that you could ever get. And this is where I just am as I, I don't care. I'll just be as truthful as I could be. C2 has no business relationship or partnership with Thinkorswim. Um, Tom Sosnov, on the other hand, the founder right there, he, um, you know, we, we love him, but he's on a different, you know, he's on Tasty Trade right now. Um, we have no like working relationship with Thinkorswim, but they have Bookmap, they have, you know, level four, as we nickname it, at such a discounted cost that it's like a no brainer for me to just tell anyone to go out and get if they're on Thinkorswim. Now, let's say if you're not looking to do that, then I'd say your best bet would be to go to like NASDAQ Book Viewer. And that would be right here. I was kind of loading this up in the meantime, but here we go. The NASDAQ Book Viewer. This is a standalone product, but this will be able to show you the entire ECN book, well, the entire NASDAQ ECN for any stock you want to load up. So this is just 15 bucks per month. It's even cheaper than uh, book map on Thinkorswim. But you know, this can give you a good sense for knowing where orders are. Like right now on Wisa, there's about 18 separate orders sticking out here at the price 440. Um, now 440, I think, was the high of the day. Oh, maybe it was at first, popped it earlier. But uh, all right, so 440 could be a, a little level to work off of here, just for the mere fact that there's a lot more sellers, at least a lot more sell orders out there um, at this price. It's not, it's not a large size. It's only 2,000 shares. The, the size here is not big. That's not an iceberg. But when you look at the number of sellers there, all right, well, that kind of stands out compared to all the other prices out there that have orders at them, right? Um, not much really sticking out right now. We're heading into the late morning, early afternoon, so that happens. But you know, otherwise, just NASDAQ book viewer would be your next best bet otherwise there. Uh, Joe asking, where does wealth charts come into play, if at all? So uh, C2 does not use wealth charts specifically. We partner with them on webinars. So we love working with all the educators from wealth charts. I know it's a big con conglomerate. Um, so, you know, just I wanted to mention that to you there. But, you know, NASDAQ Book Viewer is what we focus on, level three. That's what we nickname it as. And that's just what I showed you. So, you know, this is my trade station platform. This is my level three. This is actually my level three that's integrated into this trading platform. It serves the same purpose as this here, but not every platform has this type of tool. And Thinkorswim is the only platform that actually has Bookmap literally integrated into the platform where you could press a button and it turns your charts into it. Um, Schwab as well, but I think that they're still kind of stalling out on that. I think they've been kind of delaying that on Schwab for a little bit, right? All right, I got a lot of comments here. And actually, we got to get through some emails. Emails normally come first. So my apologies if you'd sent in any early. I will make sure I get to you before we finish up. But a lot of good chat coming in. So, you know, I was asking our students to you know, help out one of our uh, trial members that was asking just Manisha, you know, just, uh, you know, what advice from students can uh, he get? Leonard says, buy dips and don't chase green candles. I like that. It's a good way to phrase that too. 
Ravina says buy support, sell resistance. That's it. And yeah, that adds on top of what I said too, like, right, like resistance to become support over time, right? This damn thing is going to keep trying to give a crack at a 430. Maybe that can flip into support over time there. So, you know, the more times it can, we'll be interested. Uh, but what else we got? Bill says, pay attention to the chat window, especially Fausto's and Josh's call outs and Rich and Rich too, Bill. I know I'm, I'm, I'm teasing. I got to give Rich a little love, but uh, actually with that, how about this little tidbit? I show this in class and I'll show this next uh, week in phase one. But there's actually a little scroll bar that you could pop up in this main chat. I don't know if you knew this. So if you click this little settings gear right here, you'll get this drop down. And this is for all of us in the chat board, trial members, students, everyone. Now, if you check this little box here, mod only, if you check that box, that actually weeds out any of like the comments from students. And that, you know, hey, that's just, an option for you know anyone out there because not everyone wants to see every post you might be more interested in fausto's call outs in my call outs in riches the moderators so you know that's just something you know i show in class mainly but that's a nice tool to use there as well just to add on top of what um bill had mentioned there saying especially with fausto and josh's call outs and rich and rich too <laughs> now i'm teasing all right here we go here we go now come on Here's a clean break, nice little pop. It made a better push above it. Next candle opened up. This would be the opportunity to see this 430-ish get flipped into support. Probably put another line here just because you know it's like 430-ish, 434. But let me ask Bill, Allen joining us here today, fill up our gold students, platinum students, and above, of course, diamond as well. When a stock breaks above resistance, we should, or I'm sorry, I'm mixing up my catchphrases here. How about that? When a stock breaks through a big level, what should we be expecting shortly after? When a stock breaks through a big level, what should we be expecting shortly after? There we go. I got, I got fixated on resistance support there for a second. Yes, when a stock breaks through a big level, we should be getting a big move shortly after. So easy to say it's already up like 40, 50 cents. But this is what you hope for with as much proverbial buying as you had there, as much green as you had there. The more times it's nipping it, you'd figure that there should be some more decisive reaction. Let this thing either make a lower low and completely fail, which it did not. And I was pretty surprised that it pushed up one more time there. But hey, if it's going to provide that opportunity, then you can try and take it on the next break. Just need to see it hold as support. And easy to say, you know, it pretty much did right there. Uh, let's see here really quick. Got a lot of chat, a lot of chat here. So from peeling, uh, asking here in the chat board. So if I use thinkorswim, I don't need to get book viewer from NASDAQ. That is up to you. Um, I have students that like to actually still have it, but my answer is, I don't think that you would need it personally. Um, if you have book map on thinkorswim. Alan says I'm paying, um, you know, X amount a month for interactive brokers for book map. Is there a better price for Canadians? Uh, probably not, unfortunately. And I'm not saying that just because of Canadian versus not. It's just either I know that book map is available directly on their website, which is a great source to go to. That's the version that I have. But otherwise, though, this thing fly now. But otherwise, Thinkorswim would be your best, you know, platform to integrate book map into. I know that you could trade your trading account on bookmap like you know this platform here you could actually connect your interactive brokers uh account you could even connect your trade station account to um i don't i don't find a reason to as much and then that's fine but that's where i just say otherwise i know that thinkorswim literally integrates this onto the platform whereas this for me is a standalone product here um but otherwise though unfortunately i, I don't know if there's a better deal there for you alan Mark saying, I'm, I'm here uh, on the free trial. I trade on Ninja Trade. I use their volumetric charts, which show the order book 100 levels deep. Very nice. Uh, is that comparable to book map? Certainly seems to be. I mean, 100 levels deep is, is pretty good. I mean, I think even my version of my level three, Trade Station, the matrix program it's called. I think this goes like 30 price levels deep on the bid and ask. So that sounds pretty good to me if you're at 100. Wayne says we used to have audible tone when moderator posted in chat like that. Yeah, we got to just figure out one or two things. Otherwise, pretty new trading room software that we still have. 
All right, we caught up on chat. I think we caught up all on chat inside our live trading room. We got a couple perhaps on YouTube. Daniel B joining us maybe from just before, but um, otherwise, let me go through emails here now, if I may, and we'll wrap up, right? All right, so I did answer actually one that was more of a private chat from our trial member there, Chris. Um, you know what? So I don't even think this is too much as much of a question, just more of a comment from one of our new members, Charles. I see you here, Charles, saying, you know, I have not done as much trading this week. Did one yesterday. I think he had mentioned on the ES futures, unless if ESM is separate, but ES futures perhaps. Uh, two contracts over over minutes did pretty damn good, it seems like. He ended up shorting, made some good money. Also, quick shout out to Charles, our new member joining us. He says it's his birthday, or it was yesterday. So a little uh, birthday money there, but that may have went to the tax man. So he, he had to do some taxes. He said, plus had, had some yard crew over here doing some spring cleanup. He'll watch for the link. So great to have Charles with us here. All right, so you know what? That'll segue me to uh, you know the market as a whole. That'll segue me to you know the spy and Tesla. New Tesla from yesterday, where Fausto was focused on, and obviously myself um, heading into this morning. So we were talking about this thought last week. If you go back one week ago in Traders Talk, I believe we were talking about it. Otherwise, I talk a lot. So it was probably just during separate coaching calls, the afternoon broadcasts I do in our trading room. But I think a lot of us in our room at least recall this gap I was referencing. And for the last like two weeks, I've been saying like, it's no guarantee. We might continue here. But in the event where we build lower highs and we don't hold over support, I was calling out for a support line at 517.50 to be exact, right? Basically, basically there former top here to have flipped into support it was chippy and it didn't bounce it continued to pull back under it and that's where you say all right well the possibility of this gap getting filled increases because more gaps on the spy chart get filled than not and the last major set of gaps that we had did not get filled pretty surprising back from november december time here so that's where I thought that there's a good case to see this happen. So I'm going to look to try and load up on some swing trades throughout this week and next week, see if we can continue to pull back a little more. Uh, we dropped as low today as 502.42. This low here on this candle, basically where it had gapped up from, is 503. So I feel like there could be more room on the way down to come all the way down here a bit or maybe a little bit above it. But Otherwise, that's where for stocks like Tesla, that made for an easy short from yesterday into today. So Tesla here, pardon me, from yesterday, oh man. So from 165, just what we were talking about earlier with Wisa, just flipping it around for a short, this right here, the more times it cracks this support level over time, and more so than not in a smaller concentration, you're going to get a better reaction, a better continuation. So it took what, like four or five stabs at it? Probably take a small loss on one of these here. It tries to go and it doesn't. You know, if it's not going to make that big reactionary move down, then maybe there is a case to see support hold, right? Well, the more times it does stab it, eventually this thing's got to give out. So it pulled back below this. This was yesterday, uh, pretty much noontime around there, and smashed below support, made for an easy short at that point, right? You see what I see. Ready for this? I was trying to hold my breath. Oh, man, it's running up a little bit without me there, but I took a lot of meat off the bone on this trade from earlier. I mean, even from 281, then 292. Tis what it is, folks. It ain't the first trade I uh, left some money on the table for. It won't be the last for any of our students here right now. I hope you're in this trade. If anyone's in right now, let me know. But this is a phenomenal pop right now. Continuated move. It's exactly what you would hope to see happen off this level. And again, there is probably like a false breakout or two here that you could have had where right place, wrong time, maybe. But otherwise, man, what a pop. This thing freaking exploded. Dollar 20 cent gain. Um, I think that there could be a gap fill on here on the way up. See this try and go all the way up towards like 11, 12 bucks. And that's not with confidence, but certainly thinking that now compared to earlier this morning, that was not even a thought earlier today. So the more this pops up, I'm thinking, oh, shit, we got to just keep seeing resistance get flipped into support, like I said previously. All right, all right, all right. We're at one right now, Alex. Alex, one of our gold students in this trade right now from 454. 
might be a good time to take some profit because look at this 564 this broke his support back in feb march time here hey we just talked about this throughout this whole traders talk right resistant or i'm sorry support should initially become what so if it continues to push up over time then you could always try and jump back in but you know this is like the first real test of this year as a working resistance level so i would be taking the money and fly and running the other way here at this point and if it keeps going so be it we're not here to play lotto right that's why i took my money and ran uh if i was not teaching this workshop perhaps would there be a chance for me to take this trade yeah yeah and say probably take a small loss in between too right right place wrong time at first and then it made the better push afterwards but um alex my friends i hope you got out because that was head on right speaking of head on 12 o'clock right now we are going to finish up on perfect time folks so with that in mind all of our students i hope that you enjoyed all of our trial members here i hope that you gained at least a little something here out of this workshop today uh we do this every tuesday morning um otherwise though again coming up next week we are, we're beginning our full education from the very top of our cycle again our, our cycle is broken into three months every three months is a new education cycle so we started the calendar year january february march here we are again back in april this is literally as good of a time to learn as ever so for any of our trial members here if you're looking to learn more about our curriculum more about what we do here you know the next steps just make sure that you talk to your education advisor they're the middle man or middle woman between you and fausto you and myself as well um of course i'm here to answer any trading questions like this stuff here but any questions about our courses education details about our programs just you know talk to your education advisor they're here to assist uh with that but if you have any other questions let me know josh at c2trading.com and for all of us on social media hope you enjoyed as well um be a friend tell a friend i always like to say just hit the follow or subscribe button and spread the good word at cyber trading you on all of our social media streams and platforms alike namely youtube though that is where we host all of our main education videos at least there you know otherwise our courses of course you got to join us here for but you know, otherwise we'll be back here later on this afternoon at 2 30 just for our afternoon meeting and uh, we'll go from that point. Hopefully a new entry on this trade coming up here for Lisa. Talk to you all soon.